Okay, so now, um, shall we talk about Zippoli Stoccata? Right, right. This is a really interesting example how knowing standardization can help us to find the right interpretation of, in this case for an organist, of two different signatures in this toccata. So this is an example of a toccata all'elevazione by Zipoli. We find at the beginning of the toccata the melody, now a play. This, uh, I've tuned before this interview with this virginal with um, a Minton system, so... And it doesn't have any indications by the, the editor of this edition. But when we find this, the, the melody, this theme, transposed to the fifth degree, okay, we find... Zippoli writes in this point a natural scene and the editor says, <laughs> but is this but is this a natural or is this a flat a sharp so if we return back to the first um, melody at the beginning of the toccata and we try to read this melody with solmization we would read so we have we are in uh, in the hard hexachord so g ut mm -hmm. ut fa sol la Re or La, and because we are on, also on the F. Re, sorry, um, La, Sol, La, Fa, La. And it sounds more, uh, it sounds better according mm. to this tradition, to this language. Now, listen to two different, the two different um, versions. So, it, this, this one, it, it is uh, played today. And this one is, if we consider this note as a fa super la. Mm. And in the next, in the next version, in uh, on the fifth degree, we find. So it makes more sense. There is not. Yeah, there is not. Uh, I don't know how the why the editor writes here the sharp. Yes, of course. Uh, Too much fixed says, dough. That's at the, why. <laughs> at the beginning, at the beginning, we have a natural B, so a tone, and now we have a semitone. So the editor maybe thought that the thought that the correct version was the first one. Mm. But are is that is that Sure. So it is not maybe the second version correct because the first one was implied thanks to the fa super la in the solmization system that this was the grammar right. of the baroque period. And, and Zippoli is so, wait what what year was Zippoli's staccato? Or when was he active? Uh, it was active in the in the eighteenth century. Eighteenth century. Oh, wow! As as recent as that. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't remember at the moment exactly when he was born and when he was died. But I can check it. I can right check it now. too. So uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Zipoli. Okay, it was born in the sixteen eighty eight and he died in the seventeen. In Argentina, he went to Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> can you believe that? I'm looking at Wikipedia. Oh. Yeah, I'm looking at, at Wiki Wikipedia. Wow. Fantastic. Good. Okay, well, wait a second. Zippoli, he is a 18, well, you could say late six, uh, 17th into the early 18th century. And he's, he's like you said, this is a great example, uh, Ricardus. But imagine he went to Argentina. And can you imagine this master with the solmization, the partimento? He goes to South America. Who knows how far this heritage has spread across the world? It's really very interesting. Yeah, and um, I don't know what was the situation, the social and cultural situation 
in, at the end of the 17th century in Argentina. But I know from someone who wrote me an email, thanks to all what I do on YouTube, from Brazil and someone from Argentina. And I know that there are historical organs of the 18th century in Brazil, for example, in some parts, in some lands wow. of Brazil. And I, I was really impressed when one of, uh, of those, uh, whose name is Pedro, sent me a, a video of him playing in an historic, on an historical organ in Brazil of the, if I remember correctly, it was an organ of the 18th century. Wow. I didn't know Woo! this. <laughs> so amazing. there is a, a, a newly music tradition at, in the Absolutely. south of America. Can we just find, a, we need to find a regule, a parliamentary regule in, in South America. It's going to come, one of these days, it's just going to show up and it's going to blow a lot of minds. Okay, this has been exactly. amazing, Ricardus. I mean, this is just nonstop excitement, interesting stuff. I think we should talk a little bit about your wonderful ebook. You have an ebook that I think more people can, they can check out uh, if they want to learn more about psalmization. They can download a free ebook before if so. There's your amazing course that they can buy, but if they want a taste, they can check out the ebook. Yeah, this ebook in this ebook, I show six examples. There are six, if I remember. Two of them are the Ave Maria Stella and this one basically. Uh, four that are useful, that are useful for understanding how solmization today is really useful for musicians who uh, lives, who plays music of this period. Because if only if you know some musician, you can uh, understand the six examples I put in this ebook. But there are a lot of, of uh, other examples that so it is only a, an introduction, a book as an introduction. So there are six, six, um, six uh, examples. But you can find in a lot of music some parts or some passages where, if you know some musician, you will be able to understand and harmonize correctly this passage, like in a partimento. For example, there, there is a slide I've prepared with uh, the chromatic scale. Now, let me bring it up. Let's show, yeah, let's show these slides. Now, on this slide, we can see the D minor chromatic scale ascending and descending. And all the notes, at, uh, at exception of the first one, because it's a starting point, are called Fa or Mi. So how can we harmonize a chromatic scale like this one without knowing the rules of partimento and the rules of uh, harmony. There is a really simple trick. So one of the most important rules that a lot of um, uh, musicians write in the 17th century in their treatises, like if I remember correctly Gasparini, is that when you have a me in the bass, but a me thinking in some musician, you have to put a six. If you have this scale, the chromatic scale, that is D, Re, Fa, Mi, Fa, Mi, Fa, Mi, Fa, Fa, Mi, Fa, Mi, Fa, and you put on every Mi a six, you will have, for example, let's start with an octave. Okay, so. Fa, we can put every kind of harmony. Now, a sixth on Mi, then Fa, then a sixth on Mi, then Fa, three, five. Then we have a Mi, the G sharp, sixth. Then we have this note, that is Mi, Fa. But this becomes Mi, because of Mi, B flat, and B flat is Fa, so Fa, Mi, so sixth, Fa, Mi, sixth, Fa, Mi, sixth, and Fa. 
and this is useful if you can read um, alterations in in a um, in a baseline as mi or fa when you realize a partimento for fun for finding the correct harmonization of the mm. mi with the six because if you find a mi okay you don't think to some to the rule of the octaves or other rules if you're realizing the partimento as a side reading okay you think okay it's a mi optimization so let's put a sixth sixth okay now for example i go from this chord from this g to um c sharp okay this is me because me so i put a sixth now i want to go to this b and after this b i have c so i have me fa. so six on me and then fa this that is, is how so cool and chromaticism is useful for us that is so cool ricardus <laughs> that's so awesome i love that the the blend of solmization and harmony comes together it's so cool yeah 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 it's another way of thinking as I said, as I say every time, is another way of thinking music. It's Why not, don't they uh, teach this anymore? Uh, Why don't they yeah. teach this? This is so cool. I mean, this is, is. I don't know. Oh, they 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 really don't like the Asian regime, right? <laughs> they really want to come up with new. Oh. <laughs> they really don't like it. Yeah, but, I mean, maybe it's... maybe we can say that the solmization is not democratic or politically correct sometimes. <laughs> okay, uh, Ricardus, <laughs> I, I do have a question for you. So, is it, yeah. do all Renaissance composers use solmization? So, Palestrina, um, or do you, do you want to move your camera, Ricardus? Oh, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Hello. <So. laughs> okay, uh, let me just keep an eye on what that was. One hour and seven seconds. Okay. Good. Let, me, let me repeat that that because uh, that rant was actually quite good. Ricardus, why don't they teach this in school? I mean, this is so cool the way that they. they I don't know. It's so. Um, I mean, it's it's like it's a totally different way of thinking, and it makes a lot of sense. And even more important, it's it's historical. It actually was the exact way that they thought. So why aren't we doing what they thought? Why do we have to? I mean. I mean, we're making it difficult for ourselves. I can't find a, a, a good answer or a correct answer to this question. Sincerely, I don't know. What I think is that musicians today still think that musician is not so useful. Maybe because they don't know how to apply them. But I can I don't know the necessarily an answer that could be the exactly reason right. why. Right. We can say that the civilization wasn't taught in in the previous century. So as partimenti is something that we are discovering discovering again now, and maybe civilization that is something more uh, peculiar, something more little. It needs times, but I'm sure that uh, we will this, bring this back. Th this is coming that, back. That my work exactly. <laughs> my, my Lead the way, Ricardus. Ricardus, you're the general. Lead us. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the new discovery of civilization in uh, exactly. modern days. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> kidding around. But I mean, I, I, I think people like you who are really bringing to light this, this awesome pedagogy from the past. I think it's really to be uh, applauded and I, I really, I'm celebrating the fact that someone like you is on YouTube talking about these things because there needs to be more people and you're leading the way.